Hi everyone, I'm Ted Reinhardt and I'm going to run you through how to create a NFT on the internet computer. We're going to start with a DIP721 style of NFT and we will be starting from the assumption that you have already got a development environment set up and this is going to take about 15 minutes to run you through the entire process. Let's get started. So I've just got a WSL2 implementation set up here um, and I'm going to now go and I'm just using my home directory I'm going to create a new project called dip721 and so I run the dfx new uh, and the new project name they'll call it dip721 and this will go out and create the structures some HTML as well as some of Toco code which is normally like the hello world type of uh, application uh, common to the internet computer and it will just go ahead and build directory structures and set me up there we go so let's just take a look and see what's been created so I'm just going to change into the 721 directory the project directory and I'll just take a quick brief peek around and you'll see that there's a whole structure of things that have been created and the area that we'll be playing with the most will be the source uh, code dire uh, directory SRC. So what we need to do now is to start the local replica. So I'm going to go into another tab uh, over here and I will then confirm that I'm in the top of the project directory and I will do a dfx start. And this will start a whole bunch of processes and the local replica. And it just takes a second to start and it will just stay there and spin and delivering services. There you go, it's up and running now. So now we're going to go and grab the dip21 source code. So the way we're going to do this is there's a really cool editor that's out an environment to learn Motoko code and it's called the blocks editor and it's on github.io and what we're going to do is we're going to load up the dip721 nft template and this is a subset of uh, dip721 and it's been adapted uh, from some code that suddenly hazel wrote and it doesn't fully implement the uh, dip 721 uh, standard if you want to call it that uh, but it's a good starting point for us to begin so I'll just go down here into compile and it's going to generate the Motoko source code and there you can see that it's created the actor dip 721 NFT um, in the source code um, gave it a name for the NFT and a symbol and it's got all of the uh, contract details in the Matoko code and I'm just going to copy that so that we can paste it into our editor later. There we go. So now we're going to go drop the DIP721 source code into the uh, smart contract basically. So we are going to go into the uh, source directory. I'll show you this. So we're going to go into here and we want to get into dip721. That's where the existing Matoko code is and if we looked at that you would see that it is the code for the greet dap. And now we're going to remove that we're going to drop the code in here, paste it because we copied it to clipboard before. And now we've got the Matoko code inside the main.mo. And if you want to see what public functions are available in the smart contract, we can just quickly 
do a grep and you can see all of the the queries and functions uh, that are available. So things like name and symbol and uh, mint down here, they're all there. So I created three digital assets, uh, three PNG files called 1.png, 2.png, and 3.png, and they're in a subdirectory called digital assets, and I'm going to drop them into the uh, asset canister directory structure under the source uh, code directory. So just to confirm where I am, I'm in the top of the project directory. I'm going to go into the source code directory, and you'll see that there are uh, a couple of directories. The one I'm interested in is dip721 assets, so I will change directory to dip721 underscore assets. And under here, there's another directory called assets. And you can see that the logo.png uh, file, which is in purple here, that's the original um, Definity logo that we had displayed on the web page a second ago. So I'm just going to go and grab the digital assets that I want to put in this directory. So I'm going to copy. I had a, created a directory called digital assets. And I've got a whole bunch of PNG files that I want to put here. And we can quickly see they're all there. Now that I've got all of the digital assets in the directory structure and we've modified the Matoko code so that the DIP721 smart contract is in the right spot, we will deploy this. So first of all, I'll confirm where I am. I'm at the root of the project. So I just do dfx deploy. And you'll see it creates the wallet canister on the local network. And it's going to create the smart contract canister and the asset canister. And it will load it all up. And there we go. Now that we've deployed canisters, we can start our node server. And we do that by just typing npm start. And it'll just take a second. And it will say it's deployed successfully. And you'll notice at the top that the page is accessible through localhost 8000. That would be the index page. But in this case, we'll use it uh, to uh, access our PNGs. And I'll show that to you in a second. So you can see that in the asset canister, I have my first PNG, my second one, my third one, as well as the original uh, logo from Definities there. So they're all deployed, and they're available to mint into NFTs. So let's see if this stuff is all working. We've deployed the DIP721 contract, and we can check it out by going with a DMF, DFX canister call to the DIP721 smart contract and see, show me the name of your NFT series. And it comes back and says it's example NFT. Same thing as if we want to know what the symbol is. And there we go. And now if we want to mint canister, we can do that by calling the mint instruction. And then we need to have the smart contract uh, put in the URL. And that's what the argument is for here. So
Now, normally you wouldn't be using a local host as the URL. You could be using your static canister entry, but this is just to demonstrate how this would work. And lo and behold, we can see that it generated the one NAT, which is the token ID for this first NFT. And if we want to generate another one, we could create another one. And this is with the second picture. And then I've got the, uh, the third image here. I create a third one. Now, if I wanted to also mint um, the first one a second time to create another token, I can still do that. And it's going to give me the fourth token ID, but with the first picture. And that's, that's totally normal. So let's check out who is the owner of an NFT. So we can put in here the owner of, and that's a capital O F in the owner of uh, function. And we just pass the token argument to it. So we say who owns token number one? And it comes back and says, oh, it's this principal. Now you might wonder who is that principal? Well, if I was to uh, run the DFX identity, get principal, you would see, oops, you would see that I am uh, running that principal and we can just check to see who is I in that case, who, who is the person, so, or the entity. You can see that right now it's set as default and the get principle for that yielded the P3 uh, principle. So if I had another uh, person, let's say Alice was going to be um, doing some transactions, I can just check on what her now I'm using Alice off and I can check to see what her principle is. So that's that's quite useful. I'll just go back to using the default. So that's where I started from. And now I can check to see um, do I own, I'm going to do a transfer of a of a token. So let's just see, do I own number one? Yes, I do. Um, and just to further confirm, uh, I might want to see what the uh, URL is of that token. Um, and it's token one. So that's the first image that I've got. And now I'd like to transfer this out to, to Alice. So in order to do a transfer like that, I need to use the transfer from command and I have to specify a fair amount of things. So I have to go and say, you know, DFS canister called dip721. The function is called transfer from. I have to provide the, the from principle and the to principle as well as the token ID. Now in this case, I have to specify principal in front because this is how in Candid you specify the type principal. So once I do that, it comes back with no error message or no uh, response at all. It's a null response, meaning that it was successful. Now if I was to go and check to say, do I own this token? Sorry, do I own this token? It says, no, I do not own it because I just transferred it out. And then if I want to know who owns that token, well, there's a, a command for that as well, or a function for that. And I can just ask who is the owner of the token. And it comes back and says, uh, this 
this person or this principal owns this this token. So now if I go and I try to transfer that token, I'm not the owner. I'm uh, principal P301, that's true, but I'm not the owner. This should result in an error, which it does. It is sort of uh, an error uh, saying that you're not the owner, you can't do it. So there, now we've got a DIP721 contract that's implemented and minting NFTs. So while we have managed to mint an NFT, this thing is definitely not production ready. There's no front end, there's no marketplace integration, it's not working with a wallet yet, uh, there's no access control or security, it's not a full implementation of the DIP721 interface, it's just a subset. You don't have ownership history, and uh, there's no integration with other wallets and marketplaces with something like DAB. Um, this is not there yet. So there's some work to be done, but hopefully this will get you started.